Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, cyclocross stars do take over the road world at the Arctic Race of Norway. Domestic riders dominate the Colorado Classic. We've also got the Bink Bank Tour, the Ladies Tour of Norway, the Euro IC Classics in Hamburg, and the Tour of Hungary. First up though, we want to ask, what next for American cycling? Uh, we had the privilege of doing live coverage of the Colorado Classic over the last four days. A fantastic event with two thoroughly deserving winners. Katie Hall and Gavin Mannion both set up their respective victories with wins at the Classic Vale time trial on stage two. Their teammates at United Healthcare did a sterling job to defend their leads to the finish. And on the men's side, they also finished second overall with Sergei Tvetkov and took the final stage with Travis McCabe in a big bunch sprint. That's the good news. The bad news is that the team looks set to fold at the end of the season. And it's a big blow to the US scene. United Healthcare have sponsored that squad since the end of 2009, and the team itself has been around since 2003. There's no doubt that Gavin Mannion and Travis McCabe should find jobs elsewhere, and reportedly Katie Hall has already signed with Bulls Dormans for next year and beyond. But for the rest of the rides and staff, it's a horrible situation to be in. And in exactly the same situation are the rides and staff of the Jelly Belly powered by Maxis team, as they too are set to end their sponsorship at the end of this year. Jelly Belly have sponsored that team for 19 years, so you can only say a big thank you to them for the support they've given cycling over in the US, but that jersey and that name will be dearly missed. And it means promising youngsters such as Keegan Swerbel are going to need to find a new home to further their career. Thank goodness then for EF Education First. Had they not stepped in at the last minute at the end of last year, America would be without its only World Tour team right now. Uh, Ride Argyle is now something of a focal point for American bike racing fans, and although they'd have hoped to have won the Colorado Classic, they are at least safe in the knowledge that their funding is secure for a few years at least. Unfortunately, currently, there don't seem to be any new sponsors particularly interested in stepping into the shoes of Jelly Belly or United Healthcare. And that is going to be a big blow for the US domestic scene. It's a real shame because the future does look bright for US riders. Uh, Gage Hecht, for example, displaying strength beyond his years to win stage one. Swerble himself was climbing with the best on stage three, and they're both under 22 years of age. Uh, we absolutely loved bringing you coverage of the Colorado Classic, but without a base of American squads to compete, that event could begin to suffer. So what is the answer? Is it just a coincidence that two long-term sponsors are pulling their funding at the end of the year? Or is it something to be worried or concerned about? A trend or just a minor blip? Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this very subject. Get involved in the discussion in the comments section down below. Cyclocross stars have continued to show road riders a clean pair of wheels this week at the Arctic Race of Norway. Uh, Corondon Circus managed to nab three of the four stages. Mathieu van der Poel displaying next level accelerations on the climbs to the finish on days one and four. Whilst his teammate Adam Tupelik reigned supreme on stage three, winning from the early breakaway with Van der Poel just behind him in second place. Now, it may not have been the highest quality field in the world, but nevertheless, with four World Tour teams taking part, it was still an impressive haul for the Belgian cyclocross team. The overall honours did go to a World Tour team. Sergei Chinetsky of Team Astana moved into the race lead on stage two and finished in the top eight on every single stage. A special mention, though, must go to the winner of that stage two, the toughest of the race. A 24-year-old Colin Joyce timed his sprint to perfection to take the biggest win of his career so far, and he would eventually go on to finish third in the overall classification, whilst his teammate Robin Carpenter came close to victory on stage three. Performance is that his team, Rally Cycling, no doubt must be very delighted with. Uh, they've stepped up their international presence this season and have been impressive throughout. A much needed positive for American cycling right now. A little further south, we had the Ladies Tour of Norway and it was great to see Mariana Voss back to being the boss. Uh, she won stages one, two and three and of course with it the general classification and points classifications too. And it wasn't as if it was a weak field there. Uh, many of the world's best riders were in Norway for that race. So this is very much Voss proving that she's back to her best. And as such, she is this week's GCN Rider of the Week. Second and third overall went to Emilia Farlin and Corinne Rivera respectively. And the World Tour will continue this coming weekend with the Grand Prix Plouet. Hot or not? 
This is Matteo Trentin sporting his brand new European Championship colours out in training. Uh, white top, classic black shorts. Give us your take on this kit by taking the poll which you'll find on the screen right now. Uh, Trentin wore it for the first time competitively to fifth place at the Euro IC Classics Hamburg on Sunday. Uh, the traditional Sprinters Classic ended up with a reduced bunch sprint, uh, reduced because of a crash in the finale. Pascal Ackerman touching wheels and taking with him Mark Renshaw onto the deck. Up front, unscathed and as fast as ever was Elio Viviani. The Italian champion repeated his win from last year, but this has been by far his best road season to date. He easily got the better of Arnaud Demar and Alexander Kristoff, and that meant Viviani now has 15 wins so far this season. It was the 55th for quick step, and 29 of those have come in World Tour races. So amazing, really, that they are struggling to find a headline sponsor for the coming years. Uh, things in Belgium not too dissimilar to America from that point of view. Like Trentin, Viviani will be competing at the upcoming Vuelta Espana, and so this seems like a good time to remind you that we've got daily highlights of that race over on our Facebook page. And our big preview will be up on the channel on Wednesday, where we'll talk about all of the riders and the stages to watch. Over to the Bink Bank Tour now. Uh, this seven day race was formerly known as the Eneco Tour, uh, which this year once again saw some very aggressive racing throughout. In fact, so aggressive was it that there was only one bunch sprint. That came on the first day of racing where Fabio Jakobsen took the honours in front of Marcel Kittel. That though was as good as it got for Kittel, who pulled out on stage six. Uh, it's been a pretty torrid season so far for the 30 year old, who will no doubt be hoping to turn things around at the upcoming Deutschland Tour, uh, which you'll also be able to watch live on our Facebook page if you're in USA, Canada or Latin America. Stefan Kung obliterated the field to win stage two's time trial, but it was on stage three that the GC would be decided. An unlikely scenario given the profile of that particular stage, but the peloton misjudged its chase and the strength of the breakaway, with Taco van der Horn taking the stage and the leader's jersey going to Matej Mohoric. And try as they might, nobody was able to take that leader's jersey off him. And Mahoric must have nullified over 100 attacks over the final four days of racing, and in the end, the closest to him was Michael Matthews, who took the final stage and closed to within five seconds of the lead. And that's the fifth win of the season so far for Matti Mohoric, who's also won his national championships and a stage of the Giro d'Italia this year. We'll finish this week with the Tour de Hungary, a race one overall by the Italian Manuel Belletti. A third place in the prologue and a stage win the following day saw him take the race lead, which he would never lose. A German Nicodemus Holler won the final two stages, his first wins in fact, uh, in the 27 year old's career. Right, that is all for this week's Racing News Show. We will be back at the same time and the same place next week, where we'll be discussing the Grand Prix Plui, both the men's and women's, the first two stages of the Welter. Uh, incidentally, you can get your Spanish t shirt on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, uh, plus the Deutschland Tour, which this year features the likes of Marcel Kittel, Andre Greipel, Roman Bardet, and Tom Dumoulin's name but a few, but also marks the return to competition of the Tour de France winner, Geraint Thomas. It's sure to be a good one, so we will see you then. Talking of climbers versus sprinters, Emma and Chris went up against each other at the recent Marathon de les Dolomites, uh, so if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out by clicking just down here.